Hi guys, uh, I'm back with an update on the dino bat. I seem to have cracked a problem. Um, instead of using a, a BD139 power transistor, which is by the way an NPN transistor, um, I switched to using uh, a 2N uh, 3055 which is also an NPN transistor uh, and this is it so let me see if I can focus on it so this is the power transistor I use now um, I switched to this uh, power transistor um, on the one hand because um, I think the BD139 was a bit too light um, to drive the uh, transformer. Um, also, I um, tweaked the frequency of the oscillator, uh, which you remember is an A-stable multi-vibrator oscillator or in other words a square wave oscillator and uh, I doubled the frequency almost to 100 Hertz uh, actually it's it's more like 99 Hertz as you can see well as you can't see uh, just yet but trust me it's 99 Hertz um, I also tweaked the low pass filter um, in such a way that um, peak to peak um, it's 3.2 volts which goes from the low pass filter which you see here to the base of the power transistor okay enough talking um, oh and by the way so I send the voltage from the transistor the power transistor into the secondary of this tiny little um, uh, transformer um, which has a secondary combined of 18 volts or 2 times 9 volts and an output rated at 220 volts okay so um, I then connected the output of the uh, transformer to, or I should say the primary of the transformer to a bridge rectifier of which I was certain it could uh, take a voltage uh, of 100 volts or thereabouts um, it's one I took out of a TV long ago and um, it seems to work perfectly so no problems there um, it's also rated for a couple of, of amps, so um, it can take uh, a quite a big load. Anyway, um, there is no load attached to the output of the rectifier bridge. Uh, well, that is, except for a multimeter, which you see here. Okay, enough talking now. Let's switch the whole thing on. It's powered... Uh, on 18 volts DC and there you go the output voltage is without a load um, around 93 volts uh, DC um, as you can see it fluctuates a little bit uh, it's not an entirely stabilized but that's something I think I can fix uh, without too much trouble uh, so anyway the output voltage uh, not equalized that is is around 93 volts DC at a frequency of 99 Hertz now the wave you see on the oscilloscope is the wave I measure um, at the waveform I measure at the base of the power transistor now interestingly enough 
if I switch off or I take out the power transistor from uh, the circuit and I then start the oscillator this is the output I get at the low pass filter so peak to peak it's about three and a half volts um, I tried to uh, max it out but uh, well actually I can go much much higher than this but um, I seem to have found let's say the optimum voltage uh, anyway um, if I if I try to push the if I try to push the voltage uh, up then um, the power transistor is uh, pushed into saturation and the output voltage doesn't rise any longer um, and it just makes the power transistor go really hot so um, I dropped the the voltage which comes out of the uh, low pass filter uh, to as you could see on the scope to about three and a half volts peak to peak anyway um, like I said I seem to have cracked the problem and I did it uh, in a few steps uh, first I tried to push up uh, the uh, power of the well the power of of, of the, the the supply and that helped it helped a lot uh, so I pushed it up to 18 volts uh, for the the oscillator circuit as well as the the secondary circuit which uh, is pumped into the power transistor that was the first thing I, I changed secondly I changed the frequency of the oscillator circuit I you know I sort of thought well what if I pumped up the frequency uh, to 100 Hertz or thereabouts so that I can maximize the duty cycle that is pumped through this uh, little transformer because remember uh, since it's square wave generator um, there it's only about 50% duty cycle normally so that would in effect half the voltage so I said okay let's just double the frequency to 100 Hertz and then finally I tweaked the low pass filter to give out as you can see uh, peak to peak uh, about three and a half volts <coughs> as you can see it, it, the oscilloscope is set to one volt per division and there's one two three three and a half divisions so there you go um, as you can see if I put the power transistor back into the circuit okay hang on let me switch it off so I put the emitter to the ground uh, the collector of the power transistor is connected to one end of the secondary of the transformer as you can see here yeah this is one end of the secondary and then the other end of the secondary which is this uh, crocodile uh, clamp uh, goes into the plus of the supply so there you go all right so um, there you see the multimeter now let's switch on the circuit and there you go uh, 
Like I said, the output voltage, which comes from the rectifier bridge, which you see over there, is, uh, well, it fluctuates a little bit. Uh, with, I would say, about 1 or 2 volts. Strangely enough, the waveform, which I measure at the base of the power transistor, changes quite a bit in shape uh, as you can see the voltage dropped to about half a volt and the shape is not exactly the sawtooth shape we saw before but is actually more resembling a sine wave or maybe a kind of a clipped square wave. In any case, it's weird. Uh, I have to look it up why the circuit would do this. But in effect, the result is that I get, well, I tend to say around 93 volts. But as you can see, it can fluctuate. A little bit up and down in any case that's where I stand um, the next step is to build a circuit with all these components on a uh, circuit board on a PCB and then test it again but that this time not with a power supply as you can see here but with actual batteries so that we can find out whether the circuit keeps on working with batteries uh, well as you know uh, the whole circuit consumes power so I'm not certain that it will run a long time on a couple of 9 volt batteries um, if it doesn't then I'll have to see how I can fix that or uh, quite simply if by adding a few more batteries I can get let's say about an hour of juice out of this uh, power supply circuit remember it has to supply a B plus voltage to the Averready of 90 volts and about 20 milliamps of current I think I can I can manage that but let's not run ahead of ourselves uh, I'll try it with some batteries if it works so much the better if it doesn't well we'll see whether we can fix it with a few more batteries in any case uh, the goal was to produce a power circuit which could produce a B plus voltage of about 90 volts and I think my primary goal is satisfied now we have to see whether we can actually make it work on batteries which is the secondary goal so this is it for now guys and I'll be back with another update soon so stay tuned